Today I'd like to tell you about my encounter on a haunted airplane. So I work for the airlines, and I can't tell you what airline it is. I am based out of Portland, Oregon. And this is a story of 409, or as we refer to it, Sarah. So the first reports about 409 came to me from a mechanic who knew I was into the paranormal. And he tells me, I locked it all down, we secured it for the night. We're done with it, it's sitting out on the tarmac, we're done. Closes the door, tapes it all off, goes in, goes to his next job. An hour later, the supervisor calls him on the carpet and says, Hey, you did not lock this plane down. He goes outside, doors open, all the bins are open, everything that is supposed to be shut is open. Does the same thing, an hour later he gets the same call, hey, you need to go out and close this plane up. Goes on for a little bit. Guy goes about his business. Everything seems secure. So he tells me about it. I'm like, okay, well the next time this plane comes in, I'm going to have to take a look at it. So as I'm waiting for the plane to come in, another mechanic tells me, listen, you need to go talk to that pilot over there. He was flying on 409. Okay, so I go over, I talk to the pilot, I introduce myself. Hey, how you doing? I'm Doc. I'm a paranormal investigator. He goes, good, I need to talk to you about this. So he starts proceed to tell me the story that they're at cruising altitude and all the instruments black out black out, back on, black out back on he's wondering what is going on here and then each individual screen starts to black out on its own he says this goes on for a while they land in Portland they write this thing up thinking it's a technical glitch avionics takes a look at it says no there's nothing wrong with the plane guy gets the plane yet again sits down in it they get the cruising altitude he's talking to his first officer about what had happened last time he was on the plane Again, it happens again. Everything goes dark, everything goes back on, and one by one, every screen comes on and off. Again, it goes into avionics. Avionics does a full check on everything. They pull out all the old components, put in new components. Guy's like, okay, that must be what it is. We fly them a lot. It's got to be a technical issue. Happens a third time. So now they're wondering, okay... So cruising altitude, it's got to be an issue. So they ground the plane for a while. Okay, mechanic tell, uh, the pilot tells me, yeah, every time he comes out and he sees that it's 409, he's never going to touch it. He does not want any part of it. About this time, a different guy comes over to me. He's a flight attendant. And he tells me, yeah, I was on 409. We were the last flight of the day. I'm walking through, making sure everything's good, buttoning up, closing all the bins as I go. And as he's walking, all the bins start opening behind him. He closes it, takes a step, that bin comes open. 409 comes back into the maintenance hangar. Okay, faulty faulty bins are not staying closed. This, is, this could be a safety hazard can't find anything wrong with the bins. Same flight attendant gets the same plane two weeks later. Again, it starts happening as he's walking up the plane. The bins are opening as he closes them. So he closes one, moves a step, that bin opens. 
goes on for a while. He gets on it the third time. Same thing happens. Again, the plane's grounded. They're trying to figure out what's wrong with it. So he's talking to me about this. I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. I'm talking to the other pilot. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird. These are weird occurrences going on. I talked to two more mechanics who say, as they're walking in, they have heard a woman's voice. All right, now. Now we got something. Now I've got multiple people telling me 409 is haunted. The plane comes in one night. I'm working. And I work graveyard. The plane just sit there. And I ask the mechanics, is anybody going to work this plane? Nope, we aren't touching it. We want nothing to do with it. There's nothing mechanical wrong with it. It's just going to sit there for a while and then somebody else is going to come in and try to figure it out. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go inside and take a look around. I go in with one of my co workers and we walk through the the entire plane, closing bins and seeing what would happen. All the bins stay closed. We're not so much provoking as we are trying to get a response. We sit down in the plane. We start to proceed to talk to the spirit. I got the camera on my phone going and it's aimed behind me while I'm looking forward. Well, sure enough, looking in my my screen and I see the bins start opening up. I stand, I, I proceed to address the spirit. I said, you've got our attention. Is there anything you would like to say? The bins stop opening. Everything goes quiet. Nothing happens after a while, so we leave. We go back about our business. About a month later, another mechanic comes to me. He says, listen, uh, if you can do anything about 409, that would be great. Because it's happening again and it's getting worse. All right. plane comes in. It's grounded. It's sitting off to the side. Nobody's touching it. Me and the same coworker, we take the spirit box on board. sitting in the middle of the plane spirit box is quiet it's doing its normal chatter we're not hearing any voices I say hey would you like to say hi to so and so my fellow co-worker there looks at me and says yeah there's nothing going on here and that's when a woman's voice comes across and says hello so and so name redacted for security reasons Well, about that was kind of the, the kill point on this one. Co worker would never be on 409 again. Again, same thing happens. Multiple weird occurrences happen. Flight attendants, flight crews themselves, mechanics, uh, people coming in just to tidy up the airplane. Gets back to me. I go on the plane by myself. I'm walking down the aisle towards the back of the plane. And this is about a 70-seater, by the way. Again, I can't tell you the make and model because it will give it away what airline it is. Now, we don't, we don't own that plane anymore, by the way. So It's not currently flying. It's sitting in a desert in Arizona. Well, let me get back to my story. So I'm walking down the aisle. And I'm talking to the spirit. I said, listen, I get the feeling you're a woman. We'd like to discuss matters with you. Could you give me a name or some way to identify who you are? And I will pass this along because sometimes the spirit just wants to be known. They're just looking for a little bit of validation. 
So as I'm walking, I hear a voice behind me with a French accent, Sarah. I turn around and I catch a glimpse of a woman, about five foot six, long blonde hair. At first, she's bloody. She has a large cut across her right shoulder, coming down across her chest. Then it kind of morphs, changes into a non-injured woman. She smiles at me, disappears. This whole thing only takes probably about three, four seconds. This is quick. Didn't have a camera. I'm at work. I have no way to document this one. And I started telling people. Yeah, 409, the name I, she told me was Sarah. So everybody else just got around to everybody. So the flight crews that would come up to me and say, yeah, I've got a problem with 409. Okay, well, when you get on 409, just say, hey, Sarah, how you doing? Just, just give the spirit a little validation. And until the time we got rid of 409 and it was retired from service, a lot of people would say that they would smell perfume. They'd walk on the plane, they'd walk towards the back of the plane doing their pre-flight checks, and they would say, hey Sarah, how are you? And they would smell a perfume. Up until the time we got rid of it, and as the story went around the airline, and people would say, hi, Sarah. All the incidents with the plan stopped. It was never back in for any heavy-duty maintenance. Nothing mysterious. Mm. At that point, it was just a normal plane. Because it was my job, I couldn't take much more in. The SP-7 was easy to smuggle in my jacket. Because I was told never to do any work, any paranormal work at my work. So hopefully Sarah has found a little bit of peace. Now the one thing I did find out is that parts of the plane were built in French Canada. Which makes it really kind of interesting. I was unable to track down if there had been any deaths during the building of this this fleet of aircraft. Because it's technically not above it's above my pay grade. 